Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. The Lord is good, y'all. He's a good God. Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but I just want you to know he's good. He's good to me. That's my only testimony. Hallelujah. In spite of all, he is good to me. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, oh God. Come on in, people of God. Come on in. I'm so grateful for just another day. Another day to accomplish the task. Another day to get done what it is that God has set forth for our feet to do and for our, our hands to do. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. I don't know about how many of y'all waiting on the Lord, but I'm waiting on God. Come on. This is my testimony. I'm waiting on the Lord to do whatever it is that he is doing. I'm waiting on the Lord. Come on to deliver. I'm waiting on the Lord to heal. I'm waiting on the Lord to set free. Yeah. My God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord still delivers them all. It's still true. The word of God is still true. When you begin to look at your problems, understand these are just those many afflictions that they were talking about. <laughs> that the psalmist told us about, these are just those many afflictions. But the Lord delivers them all. So sometimes we have to learn how to just wait. It's developing your character. Hallelujah. It's developing something in you. Thank you, Lord. Learning how to hold tight and wait in the presence of the Lord. Bless your name, oh God. Make sure you share the broadcast this morning. Hallelujah. I got a message for all, all of my leaders today. All of my leaders. Thank you, Lord. And all of the people that's, un that's following leaders. It's, we have a very strategic word this morning. You know a pastor, you know an apostle, you know a prophet, you know a teacher, you know an evangelist. We want to share this message. If you're upcoming and that's your testimony, you know that that's who you are. I want you to understand and le listen in and receive this message. If you are a mother, if you are a father, if you are the leader of your friend group, if you are a big sister, if you are a big brother, I want you to receive this message on this morning because it's going to bless you. It's going to encourage you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. God is so faithful. Yeah. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Lord, we just thank you for your presence on today. Thank you for your promises on today. Thank you for your provision and your protection on today. For you are good, God. You're holy. You're amazing. Bless your name. We come for a word today, God. Come to posture ourselves in your presence to hear a word. Thank you, Lord. Keep us. When we don't even know we need keeping, deliver us. When we don't even know we need deliverance. Allow us to hear that still small voice. May we be led by the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord, for your good. You're perfect in all of your ways. You've never made a mistake. And no problem or thing that we encounter in this life catches you off guard. For you are Elohim. You are El Shaddai. You are Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sick Canoe. You see all and you know all and you are the great avenger. For Lord, we bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah and amen. Hallelujah and amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on in, people of God. Listen. Bless your name. I'm so excited, y'all. God is good. He is so good. 
He is so good. I pray that you caught yesterday's message because it truly was a blessing. We were not live on Facebook yesterday, uh, but we are up and running. We got the internet going and the Lord is kind and faithful. Good morning, Miss Kiana. Good morning, Jewel. Good morning, Mara. Good morning, Kat. Hallelujah. Good morning, Dara. Listen, this morning, I want us to talk about backlash. That's what we are talking about on today. It is something that I'm not sure has been explained enough so that we can understand the warfare, so that we can understand that backlash comes with the assignment. It doesn't come separate from the assignment. <laughs> my God, come on. Ooh, my God, I love the Lord. He's good. Backlash does not come separate, okay? It comes with Ooh. It comes with, it comes with. You cannot separate the two. Let me see here, y'all. Give me a second. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Bless your name, oh God. Mm, mm, mm. It does not come separate. And so many people are not prepared nor do they understand the backlash. And so it makes people retreat. And that's what it's meant to do. The retaliation, that's all it is. Backlash is retaliation. In the spiritual, backlash is retaliation from the evil kingdom. That's what backlash is. And um, we have to be prepared for it so that we can endure it. We have to know that it's coming so that we don't have to be offended by it. Um, I heard a, a, a man of God teach one time and he said, deliverance ministries are the most persecuted ministries. They are hot, heavily persecuted because if the enemy can apply so much pressure okay, to the, 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 the leader, it makes them retreat. Okay, if the enemy can apply so much pressure, come on, this this is not even just in church, people of God. This is in life. All right, let's go to Mark. Mark 10. Let's go to Mark 10. Hallelujah. Let's go to Mark 10 and verse 28. Let's go to Mark 10 and verse 28. After you have come to Christ, you have surrendered your life. My God, come on. After a breaking, after deliverance, after an emptying, okay? All of these things I need you to understand. Um, Mark 10 and 28 says, then Peter began to speak up. We've given up everything to follow you, he said. We, they were talking to Jesus. He was saying, Jesus, I did what you've asked me to do. Come on, I've completed the, the first part of the assignment. I've, I've, I've did what you told me to do. I went where you told me to go. I, I, I followed through on the directions that you gave me. Come on. Um, Jesus said, yes, Jesus replied, I assure you that anyone who has given up house, because sometimes when it comes to uh, uh, following the Lord, you got to give up some things. And, I, and if you have not given up anything, you really might not be following him. And that's the problem. Many people think they're following the Lord because they go to church, because they tune into a lie, because they share a scripture. But if you have not so out, hey, but that's another message. Um, if you have not given up anything, uh, mm, I don't know on that one. Okay. I assure you, that everyone who has given up house, our brother, our sister, our mother, our father, our children, our property for my sake and for the good news, because some people have had to give up their family. Yeah. Some people have had to walk away from their children because it just wasn't, they wasn't going in the same direction as they was going uh, for whatever reason. Some people have had to give up their marriage because they were not equally yoked. They were not on one accord. Come on. Some people have had to give up property. My God, come on. I don't know about you, but when I was delivered, I had to, I wanted to. Nobody didn't tell me to. I wanted to give up. Yeah, I wanted to give up. I gave away all the purses and the shoes that they bought me because those were sin offerings. Those were only offerings to keep me in sin. So I didn't want those things. 
My God, come on. Listen, anyone who gives up house, a brother, or sister, or mother, or father, or children, or property, uh, for my sake and for the good news, will receive in return a hundred times as many houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and property, along with persecution. Whew. Along with persecution, yeah. You don't just get the blessings without the persecution. My God, come on. When you walk away uh, from a, a, a family, when you walk away from a situation, um, the thing that's so interesting, when deliverance takes place in the spirit realm, the enemy knows he just lost one. So when the enemy loses one, you got to know that he's going to come back with retaliation. All right. And I've heard people pray before against retaliation, but it's just Bible. So if Jesus had retaliation, who are you? If Jesus had it, who am I? We're going to face these things. So we have to be prepared. Yeah. My God, come on. We have to be prepared for those things. All right. Um, and so it's very important for us to understand this, uh, that persecution comes along with it. When I was leaving, um, but the Lord, let me even say this, persecution comes along with the call, but also you have to be mindful to follow. Okay. Because the Lord will navigate you around. Some of the persecution, he will navigate you around, but you got to be willing to listen. There were many times when the Lord told Paul, no, don't go to that place right now. Now don't go there because they were, they want to kill you. Don't go to that place. But we have to be willing to yield to that still small voice. Some persecution can be avoided by following the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Hallelujah. I want y'all to make sure y'all tap in the screen on TikTok. Um, I want us to understand this clearly. Now, whenever I was leaving uh the relationship with the woman that I married, um, the Lord told me to leave on a Friday. But I was comfortable. She was asleep. I was comfortable. That's why the Lord told me to leave because she was asleep. I was comfortable. And I said, I'm going to just leave tomorrow. See, you don't get to choose. That's the only thing. You don't get to choose. But what happened was, unfortunately, the next day, the Lord was trying to take me around that persecution. Yeah. He was trying to take me around it, but it just was not quite working out. Uh, it wasn't quite working out how I wanted it. So I said I was going to wait the next day. Ended up the next day, it got physical. And she had never been physical with me the whole time we were in a relationship. She she was never physical with me until that moment. But the Lord was trying to take me around it. Hey, I'm trying to help us to understand on today what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Okay. Some persecution can be avoided and some can't, but it's best to avoid the kind that you can. Yeah. It's like when your mama tell you that one ain't no good for you. Come on. It's like, it's like when your daddy tell you he's not no good. She's not no good. That's not a good choice. Some persecution can be avoided, but we got to have ears to hear. We got to have ears to hear and a heart to receive. Okay. Backlash. In the natural definition, backlash is a strong and adverse reaction by a large number of people in response to a social or political development. But in the spirit, in the spiritual sense of it, um, the, the uh, backlash is a strong or adverse reaction of warfare, okay, in response to spiritual advancement, all right? I need us to understand that this is a part of the walk, okay? And so I need us to get this for, for mothers, for fathers, for family. Think about being, a, it's, it's meant for the leader. Come on. This is why everybody can't. I don't care about no theology school. I don't care about no Greek, no Hebrew, because many of them, they have all that, but they can't take no backlash. They fold. Hey, my God. Because when they have went through, um, they went through, they've got head knowledge, but not heart knowledge. When they processed through a different vein, okay, then they, they don't know how to go through. Come on. And so everything makes them fold. But the leader is meant to take the backlash. They're supposed to be the shield. They're supposed to be. They got to be able to be strong to endure 
parents are leaders. Listen, and when a leader leads properly, God, I love your word on today. When a parent is in proper position, the children don't feel the weight. When the children follow the direction of the parents, God, I love your word on today. My God, the children don't feel the weight. God, I thank you. Come on. When the parent tells the child, hey, do this, this, and this, it's not to hurt their feelings, it's to protect them from a thing. My God, come on. When your leader tells you, hey, he's not a good guy, I wouldn't do that if I was you. Oh, you, she's just hating, he's just hating, he love me, he don't know, they don't know me like that, you know, he don't know me like, uh, they don't know how I see him, he's blah, 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 she's blah, blah, blah. You know, it's very important my God, come on to have good leaders, to have leaders with eyes to see, whether they're your parents, whether they're your, your, your spiritual leaders, my God, come on. It's important to follow. Don't follow a leader that you don't trust because you're not going to get the full benefits. You're not going to get the full benefits and you're going to spend more time arguing back and forth or not even arguing, but going back and forth. You're going to spend more time uh, uh, do, making the leader have to go through longer, harder, all these things. Just do it. And it's so beautiful. It reminds me, I'm not sure if you've seen the movie Harriet. Because if they're leading, yeah, it's because God chose them to lead. If they're leading, God, I bless your name. It's because God has led them through the fire. God, I bless your name. If they're leading, come on, it's because they've already been proven. They've already been persecuted. My God, come on. They've already walked through a level of persecution and they're able to guide you through. God, I thank you for your word on today. My God, come on. And so you have to be willing, come on, to be following the leader. Yes. Okay. Now let's think about the movie Harriet. I'm not sure if you've seen the movie or not, but the movie Harriet, Harriet made it. She made it to freedom. I don't know if you see, I'm going to have to watch that movie again because it reminds me of deliverance. It blesses me. My God. But she made it all the way to freedom through adversity, through hell and high water. Come on. She made it all the way through. Almost lost her mind because it was just a lot going on. And then when she went back, my God, come on from Zion. My God, when she went back, she went back to get her husband. She didn't go back to get the people, but it was just the positioning. See, I'm trying to help somebody understand today that sometimes it's not you go for one reason and when you get there it ain't even that that ain't even what it is you have to understand that that was not the purpose it was the positioning it was not the purpose it was the positioning so that was just a nugget all right so when she went back to get her husband, it was something else going on. I don't want to spoil all the movie, but I got to tell you, got to how I got to tell you. And it positioned her. God, I bless your name. Come on. It positioned her. God, I thank you. My God, come on to begin to take the people and rescue them, to deliver them from that place. My God, come on. She caught the most hell though. She was the head. All eyes was on her. And so there comes a part in the movie where she gets to a, a river and she's telling the people, come on. She's, come on, we're going to get ready to go through. We can't go back. This man starts arguing with her. He starts, sir, I've already come this way. She had to pull the gun on the man. I've already come this way. I've already made it to freedom and back to get you. How you going to tell me how to do it? That's crazy. That's what we have going on. That's what we have going on. Wasting time. My God, come on. The leaders already have enough persecution from the outside. They don't need it from the inside. Mm. Reminds me of children. My God, come on. You raising them. You you double their age. Come on. You done been where they been. My God, come on. And they still want to tell you what's best. They want to tell you. They want to lead you. They want to lead your house. That's why you got to learn how to open up the door. Bless God when they get to a certain age and say, well, if you know better than I know. Come on. And so it is with church. Never sit under a leader if you feel like you know more than them, you know better than them, you have secret resentment in your heart, you think they're not doing no good job, you talking about them behind closed doors. My God, come on, because you're calling down condemnation on yourself, okay? The Bible says, no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up shall be condemned. 
So don't don't sit under a leader and talk about them. Just leave. If it ain't good for your soul, just leave. It's best. The Bible says, touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. Just leave. It's best. Because they have to, they already have to go through so much uh, uh, persecution because it's the enemy's job to deter them from leading you. Do you realize, come on, that that, that the, the, the leadership, they have to be, they got to be proven, they got to be tried in every level, every deliverance, every service, come on, every time they go through a new thing, come on, it's a new level that God brings them to, but it's new adversity, it's new backlash, it's new retaliation, my God, come on, and it's put there, come on, it's put there to make them turn, go the other way. Because the Bible says when the sheep, when the shepherd is struck, the sheep scatter. When the head, come on, let's think about that in the context of family. My God, come on. When the shepherd is struck, when the daddy leaves, the kids go their own way. When the daddy leaves, the kids go their own way. My God, come on. The mama got to work. God, I bless your name. And then the kids is just lost. You got brokenhearted children. Then you got brokenhearted child mamas. And you got these families just being torn apart. You got daughter over here with a mini dress on with boys with, her, with their hands up her skirts or girls, whichever one. Now the time we live in. My God, you got boys out here selling drugs. My God, come on. When the shepherd is struck... Sheep scatter. It's the job of the enemy to take out the head. It is the job of the enemy to take out the head. This is why you got to pray for your leaders. This is why you got to pray for your parents. My God, come on. Why? This is why you got to pray for your husbands. Because it is the job of the enemy to take out the head. Because, and that, I, you know how I know that child? Because that's what the Lord taught me. My God, come on. He taught me whenever you go to do ministry, when you go to, to a crowd, you look for the head. You look for who's in charge. Because if you take out the head, the rest of the body has to follow. It's a spiritual principle. Blessings, Brooklyn, New York. My God. When the shepherd is struck, the sheep scatter. That's Matthew 26 and 31. Who bless your name, oh God. Come on. We have to understand. Leaders have to lead with authority. Yeah, they have to lead with authority. It's very important. You can't think they being mean. Come on. It means you're immature. If you think your leader is telling you to do something and you're they're being mean, it means you're immature. My God, you know how your kids, when you're raising children, you tell them, come and do this. It's not fair. You didn't tell Johnny to do it. I didn't tell Johnny for a reason. And I don't have to explain to you why I didn't tell Johnny to do it because then that's wasting my time and it's wasting my breath. Come on. Don't be that kind of way. Even, that's it, when it comes to spiritual things. Yeah. Hmm. Our verse was Matthew 26 and 31. When the shepherd is struck, the sheep scatter. I need us to understand that the Bible says the Lord will not have us ignorant to Satan's devices. And that's why we're here. We're here every morning, uh, six days a week to learn, uh, five days a week to learn what it is that the Lord is doing. It, it, we're here learning every day. See, this is why when a mother, when a single mother gets overtaken by depression, she gets overtaken by vanity, she gets overtaken by lust, whatever she gets overtaken by, the kids just, hey. when the shepherd is struck, hey. the sheep scatter, my God, come on. That's why when the big brother who's been holding it down, my God, come on, when the when the big brother has been holding it down and he been, you know, doing all the things, making sure the, the kids, the little brothers and sisters get what they need. When he goes, when he gets, if something happens, he gets locked up and goes to jail. When the shepherd is struck, sheep scatter. I'm trying to help us to see this thing so that you can understand the level of warfare that you're going through. Hey. It's meant. It's not meant for you. It's meant to get to them. It's meant to break apart everything that God has entrusted you with. But I love the Lord when he said this. The, Jesus said this way. He said, I have not lost one. Hey, glory. I said, 
said to myself, I said, Lord, let that be my testimony. I have not lost one, my God, come on, that the Lord has entrusted me. I have not lost one. That's what Jesus said, that the Lord has entrusted me with my God. Come on, because I'm postured in a position that I got to stay on post. My God, you have to know your assignment. Come on, I'm talking to somebody on today. Let me talk to the men of God for a minute. It is your, it is the assignment of the enemy to put a Delilah in your way. It is the assignment of the enemy to put a Jezebel in your way. It is the assignment of the enemy to put a woman with a big butt in your way, big breasts with a smooth talk. Come on, it's the assignment of the enemy to, to have her come in every day with a tight dress so that you can turn your head. First, you come in agreement by turning your head, looking at her behind. <laughs> trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. First, you come. See, people say, oh, it's harmless. I can just look. I can look, but don't. I've heard men of God say that. How ridiculous is that? I can look, but don't touch. Absolutely not. Because the Bible says, if you look upon a woman, hey, my God, come on. And if you're looking at her behind, you ain't looking at her to pray for. Let's just be honest. If you look upon a woman with lust, God, I thank you. Come on. Uh, you've already committed adultery in your heart. That's what the Bible says. I'm not making this stuff up. Come on. If you look upon a woman. My God, come on. But it is the job of the enemy to make you turn your head. When you turn your head, you've already come in agreement. Yeah, that's good. Right? Somebody said that, that, that's what people say. That's what a man's supposed to do. It's a lie from the pit of hell. It's not what a man is supposed to do. The Bible says, let your wife's, let the, let your wife's breasts satisfy you. Let all her, her curves satisfy you. Nothing else should be fulfilling you. Help us, Holy Ghost. But it is the job of the enemy, come on, to send a broken woman who has fixed herself up with vanity, come on, to make you turn your head. When you turn your head, the enemy know you, it's like you are like a fish on a hook. Now all you got to do is be reeled in. And every day she going to put on a tighter dress, a tighter dress. She got more nice words. She going to bring you a little piece of cake to work. Then it's going to be a day that maybe your wife didn't really greet you or, or send you out the door the way you want to be sent out the door. And so you you, you got a couple of holes. You, you got some places where you could use some filling. And she just come and just rub her hand across your back. You're just so strong. You're going to the gym. Oh. Then before you know it, y'all having little small conversations. Then y'all got to exchange numbers for work. And so then y'all texting each other. But you know, it's just, then y'all texting each other little small jokes. And see, affairs don't happen in beds first. They happen in heads. That's why you got to guard your eye gates and your ear gates. And, yay! Come on, before you know it. Before you know it, come on. Before you know it. And when the shepherd is struck. Sheep's guy. Because now when an affair happens, then the family is a hot mess. The wife is thrown off kilter. You've already, you, you've not only cheated on her sexually, you have abandoned her emotionally. You have wrecked her mentally. God, I bless your name. Come on. And so now she can't even be in one piece raising the children. Come on. So now y'all not on one accord. Come on. And so the family is in disarray when the shepherd, come on. I'm talking to my leaders today. I'm talking to my shepherds on today. I remember being 14 years old and my mama already, the, my house, the house was already shattered. My mama married a man who was ended up being drug addicted. So then she was just going through all the crazy things. He would be stealing stuff out the house. Every three months he would go on crack binges, child. It was just a hot mess. It was a hot mess. And so my mama wasn't focused. He wasn't focused. So when I ended up getting in, entangled with this young man and we ended up having sex and I ended up getting pregnant at 14 years old because when the sheep, when the shepherd is struck, the sheep scatter, I end up getting pregnant. And, you know, I remember, I never forget the day my sister and me were very close growing up. We was very close all of our little life. But when I got pregnant at 14, because I was her big sister, it shattered her. It shattered her. We got into a physical altercation that had no, we, we did uh, when people say they fought with their sisters and stuff, their whole life, child, that wasn't my testimony. I didn't know nothing about that. 
We didn't have that testimony. We didn't argue. We didn't fight. We loved each other. So we didn't have that. But but she, but I, but she was shattered because I was her little shepherd because I was her big sister. Got to understand how what you do affects people. When the shepherd is struck, the sheep scatter. We're talking about backlash on today. The backlash is not meant for, it's meant to throw you off so you can get to them. It's meant to, the distractions come so that the, so that the children can be disturbed. Yeah. Help us, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to Matthew 14. Talking about backlash. I'm talking about when you preaching the real gospel, y'all. I'm not talking about this slap your neighbor. I remember one time I had to preach, y'all. When I tell y'all, it was a preacher that had, it was, we had something going on. It was actually something going on in our church and we, we had a guest preacher and he preached a real good sugar coat and slap your neighbor. Hear y'all of that. Everybody just, it was just, yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, and so then I had to get up and I had to do the altar call. And it wasn't, I, I don't know where, who, where he had got his message, bless God. But that it, it was a whole nother, it was a whole nother, it was a shift that happened. And the word was so tight. And the altar call was so, I mean, the whole room got, went from whoo, because it was, the, you know, it wasn't dealing with sin. It was just, you could still, you know, it wasn't dealing with that. But when we came down to altar call, and you got to choose this day whom you going to serve because you can't serve homosexuality and Christ. You can't serve fornication and Christ. You can't serve hell and Christ. You got to pick a side. Mm. Amen. Amen. Now that, whoo, glory. That's a good testimony. Thank you for putting that. Somebody said, thank you for the party girl sermon. I no longer go out. Amen. Amen. So then that means it's your job to pray for me because I'm going to have backlash from that. My God, come on. Every time you go into the kingdom of the enemy, come on and snatch one out. Come on. He got to, he got to, he got to hit back. Come on. He got to hit because he want his lick back. God, I bless your name. Come on. I'm trying to help us, help us on today. We got to understand this clearly. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to Matthew 14. Backlash is real. It's real. It's real. Now, as you grow older and as you mature in the things of God, you learn to you learn to brush it off, but it's still there. You learn to fix your eyes on heaven, but it still happens. Come on, I'm going to give you some. Let's go to um, Matthew 14. So when you're preaching the true gospel, when you're preaching the true gospel, it's a whole nother thing. I'm not talking about that little light. Child, when I was in that room preaching, I tell y'all, them people was looking at me and I was just really, I wasn't even preaching. I was just giving the altar call, but I was hearing God. And, and them people was looking at me like, it don't take all of that. It don't take all of that. Literally, their eyes. That's why the Bible says, don't be afraid of men and their faces. Make your face as flint. The Lord said this in Ezekiel. He said, I have made you just as stubborn as they are. They're just as stubborn. And they stubborn on that they believe that they can be saved and do whatever. And you be stubborn on that they can't. Come on. Because it says the word of God. Just as they're stubborn, so then we just looking at each other. And I'm going to say what the Lord said, and you're going to do what you're doing, and God is still going to be God. Don't be afraid of men in their faces. Don't be afraid of the backlash that must come. They crucified Jesus. That's it. Stand strong. So true. It's so true. We got to understand this. Matthew 14 and <clears throat> 14 and verse 3. For Herod had arrested and imprisoned John as a favor to his wife, Herodices, the former wife of Herod's brother, Philip. John had been telling Herod, it's against God's law to marry her. You can't marry your, your uh, brother's wife. Now, in the Old Testament, they was doing different things like that. But right now, he said, you can't do that. Come on. He's still alive. I don't know if you know that he's still alive, but you can't marry your brother's wife. It's against God to marry her. Harry wanted to kill John. 
When the true gospel, I'm talking to somebody on today because you didn't understand the warfare that you have been under because you because you began telling the truth. Come on. See, I love God and all of his children. He is so good to me. Oh, God, I thank you. Come on. Listen, Herod wanted to kill John, but he was afraid of a riot because all the people believed John was a prophet. Listen, Herod, did, he wanted to shut the message down. It is the job of the enemy to shut the message down. When you begin to preach the gospel, come on, the real truth, when you begin to talk real, when you begin to tell the real truth, it, people begin to have a murderous spirit about you. They try to kill you. My God, come on. And that's why they'll look at you like that. If, they, if looks could kill, that's where they get there from. If looks could kill. Hey, come on. And then if they can't kill you with the looking at you, then they want to kill your name. They want to throw dirt on your name. They want to throw dirt on your character. God, I bless your name. Come on. When you began to pre preach the truth, when you will not be persuaded, come I'm talking somebody on today. My God, come on. The enemy sins, distractions. Throw you off guard. I know about it. That's why people that are heavily anointed have the most hell when it comes to relationships. If you are heavily anointed and you have a great assignment, you have to understand that a lot of times because you have become, because you have become uh, knowledgeable of Satan's devices, but you still got a heart that beats. You hear me? Do you hear me? You still got a heart that beats. God, I bless your name. And people that are heavily anointed have great compassion. Hmm. They have great compassion and they, 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 they are persecuted a lot, but they got a big heart because they got to be able to have a pure heart to hear God. And the enemy will come and send a relationship to tear you down. Look at it right when you on the right path. Here comes a relationship. So why you got to be careful. You got to be mindful. Come on. And I've learned this. Somebody told me um, before one of my marriages, that's he's a distraction. And I learned this though. And, and, and I don't know. But this is the thing that I want us to get from that. You only can be distracted if you let yourself be distracted. You hear me? Now, what you can, what can happen, it's still in the room. Let me give you an example. Uh, my daddy came to see me preach for the first time. And at this time, we were preaching in a, in a small room. This lady had let us use the back room of her studio. Okay. And so as we're preaching, um, I'm, I'm listening and we, we bless, well, I'm preaching and this little baby, he starts, it was a little baby, he starts running around, he's doing all this, he's dropping his little toy, he's making all these sounds, then another little baby starts doing all this and my daddy said, at the end, he said, he said, you did good, he said, you didn't even get distracted. So I said that to say, just because they've been sent to be a distraction don't mean you got to stop doing your assignment. It does make it harder. Come on, until you learn focus. Until you learn holy focus. When you learn holy focus, my God, come on. They can do what they do or not. They gonna get, they're either going to come under, they're either going to come in or go away. The anointing destroys the yoke. They're either going to come under or they're going to go away, my God. When you learn holy focus, when the enemy realizes I can't distract this one, I'm going to go get somebody that's easier. I'm going to go get somebody that's easier. God, I bless your name. Come on. It is the job of the enemy to send. Uh, it, and listen, of course it looks good. Of course it sounds good. It better come preaching. It better come talking about God because it knows that where you are in your walk, it can't go no other way. Hmm. My Lord, it's okay. It's okay. Because once we learn that lesson, you know what? Let me let me read that. So someone said, I missed the warning um, you was trying to give me from the Lord. Then I look, then I was looking crazy and been set back. That's okay. Because now you learn something. One, you've learned to trust the voice of your leader. You've learned to trust the voice of the Lord. You've learned to trust the direction. Come on. That's the beautiful part about it because the Bible says even Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. That's what our children, when you tell your kids, listen, we always say my mama, we always say my mama is the uh, relationship prophet child. My mama, she don't miss. If my mama miss, whoo, my mama don't miss y'all. When she look at them, she just one time, my sister said every person, every friend that my mama said was not a good friend 
ended up not. Mama said them two gonna be sleeping together. Your friend and your boyfriend gonna be sleeping together. My sister was like, no, they not. Bam. That was not a good one. Bam. That was not a she don't she don't talk. She don't miss. But what it does is it teaches you to trust her words in that area. Come on. So it's okay. It's all right. God, I bless your name. Um, it's very important to understand this lesson about the backlash. So after John told the truth that nobody, because everybody else was just going along with it. Everybody else was just going along with it. Come on. But after John told the truth, Herod wanted to kill him. He wanted to kill him. But verse six, but at a birthday party for Herod, Herod DC's daughter performed a dance that greatly pleased him. So he promised to give a vow, promised with a vow to give her anything she wanted. At her mother's urging, the girl said, I want the head of John the Baptist on a tray. Then the king regretted what he said, but because of his vow he made in front of his guests, he issued the necessary order. So John was beheaded in prison. But telling the truth. For telling the truth. Mm. For telling the truth. Come on. Let, let me help us understand this is very important. I said this. I was talking to somebody. It's very important to uh, even... Let me say this. Let's, let's go back to the relationship part because that's very important. David. We can talk about David. We can talk about Samson. Great men of God. Great calling on their life. Great warriors. But, but, but because their heart was so big, every warrior, woman or man, every warrior has to have a place of love, refreshing and refilling. Okay. Yes, God does those things, but they also need people. Now, it doesn't have to literally be a, uh, a, a spouse. It can be a best friend. Come on. But everyone needs a person, flesh and blood. Come on, on, on this earth. The Bible said it's not good for man to be alone. It's not good. Come on, it's not good because you go through things. Because when you are on the front line, come on, I'm talking. When you got people counting on you, my God, come on. The enemy comes for the head. You got to get around. You got to have somebody you trust spiritually. And when you have someone you trust spiritually, you got to let that before you get all caught up in the feelings, before you get caught up in the feelings, this is so this, you got to be like, Hey, I need you to meet my spiritual mother, my spiritual father, my pastor, the mother of the church. I need you to, I need you. If that's a problem, that's the first red flag. No, no. And then you got to be willing to say, okay, this is what's late. Then you got to be willing to, if they meet them, because some, some will meet them. You got to watch what's they present. What's their posture in their presence? Let me tell you one of my marriages. So one of my marriages, um, I, I took my husband to my spiritual mother's house who got the whole Holy Ghost. Baby, he was quiet as a mouse. He did not move. He was, because he didn't want to be seen. <laughs> that spirit did not want to be seen. And he just sat there quiet as a mouse. She asked him, what's your intentions? You got anything to say? No words. But then I took him to my mama's house. God, I bless your name. And she's still coming on through. We're going to say it that way. They just fit in real, real good. And that's no, no shot. It's just, just, we're just talking. Uh, he just fit on right on in. He just fit right on in. I had to watch that. When I look back now, I, I seen the posture. See, you have to put people in different atmospheres. Let me see how you respond in the presence of God. And let me see how you respond if, if we come to an atmosphere where there is a religious spirit, the form of God, but no power to live holy. Come on. You have to, you got to have people that you trust spiritually and you got to trust that if they say no. I had somebody tell me one time, I'm not, if I go, if I take my mate to a pastor and my mate says, no, I'm still going to marry him anyway. Well, then you don't need to sit under that pastor because if they're your pastor, if they're your leader, they have led you through, they have talked you through deliverance. They have labored with you. They have sacrificed for you. Come on. They've been on your side all this time. And you're going to say, you're going to, you don't trust that if they tell you no. It's, it's something unsubmitted in you. Hey. Come on. That's a red flag. You have to have people. You have to have people that come that come in agreement 
or disagreement. That's why it's called courting. It's not, we don't date in the kingdom of God. Come on, that's it. We It's called courting because the blessing of it is it's courting. You're taking this person before the courts of your life. My God, you're taking them to be judged. You're taking them to be judged. You better take them to be judged. Come on, because you'll be somewhere sitting silly. I'm trying to help us on today. I'm trying to help us. I'm trying to help us. If they don't want to meet your spiritual family, red flag. Come on. No, if they don't already, you got to respond. You have to look at their posture when it comes to worship in the presence of God. Come on. I heard a man of God say it this way, and it's so true. He was talking to his daughters, and he said, when you in the sanctuary and you all in, child, and you, and you know the presence of God is flowing, and you just in, if, look at how they responded. If they just sitting there looking at you, baby, they dead on the inside. <laughs> because the Bible says only the living can praise God. <laughs> My God, come on. It's like Martha, uh, not Martha. It's like Elizabeth and Mary, when their bellies touch, the babies leap. Come on. How are you in here with this much power and you're sitting there so reserved? You got to look at that. You got to look at how they respond in the presence because some people have the appearance godliness. They ain't got no power. They know scripture. They got a good, they even, you know, I don't, they might even invite you to their church. Good. I need to go to your church because I need to see what kind of teaching you've been sitting under. I need to see what kind of, you better judge people. Y'all better stop saying this. Nobody judges me and I don't judge nobody. The Bible says judge righteously. There are so many cliches that even the people of God are saying. That's a cliche. That's an antichrist cliche to say, I don't judge people. The Bible says judge righteously. Prophets are meant to judge. Deborah was a judge. The Lord told Jeremiah, you are a, uh, uh, you are a, what word did he use? Um, you are to judge people. You are to, to, to judge their character righteously to determine if they have my spirit. Come on, you are supposed to judge. Hmm. Yeah, somebody said, I, I thought it was to test the spirit, but not judge. The Bible says judge righteously. Come on, you got to see, women of God, you got to see his, uh, you got to see his demeanor. Okay, men of God, you got to see her demeanor. Don't pick her just because she's cute, because she brick house built. Come on, because all of that's good. All of that's good. I don't even care if she can cook and clean. That's good. Bless God. Can she pray? Can she prophesy? Come on, can she see me for who I am? Come on, can she see me in the spirit? Can she speak to my spirit man? Talking to my warriors. And you do got to test the spirit. That's the same. That's that is true. You do have to test the spirit. That's what judging is. It's trying the spirit. That's why they say you got, when they call it judging, when they court things, when it comes to courts, they say we're trying the case. So yeah, it is judging, test the spirit. Yeah. That's it. You got to make sure there ain't no icing and no substance. You're telling the truth. Icing and okay. You got to, you got to make sure that these people are real. Listen, because it is the job of the enemy to strike the shepherd. The Bible says, guard your heart for everything you do flows through it. And one heartbreak can send people off. Some people don't recover because they put all their eggs in one basket, which is what you are supposed to do. You're not supposed to be reserved. Once you get into marriage and all those things, you're supposed to put your eggs in one basket. But if you put them in the wrong basket, some people, my God, come on, some people do not recover. Somebody said, Judge, what, what, let me see what they said. The Bible says, judge not. You mean the scripture that says, judge not, judge not, lest, le lest thee be judged. But it also says, judge righteously. You can't pick one scripture and base your whole doctrine on it. You got to eat the whole scroll. Come on. Don't judge in a way that's not righteous. That's what the Bible means when it says, judge not, lest thee be judged. Judge according to the same measure and standard that you judge yourself. That's what that means. Come on, we got to eat the whole scroll, y'all. Eat the whole scroll. Eat the whole scroll. Eat the whole scroll. Come on, we cannot pick 
This this is it, this is what it looks like when we've been picking over the scriptures and we only preach what we've been heard. That's what that's that that just goes. I'm not saying that that's wrong. It is in the Bible. It does say judge not lest they be judged. Absolutely, it does say that. But a lot of people have used those scriptures against God. They've used the scripture against God. Come on, He said, judge righteously. Judgment starts at the church. It starts at the church. I remember a man of God reached out to me one time on social media and he said, uh, he, I, he said, I don't know. I can't remember the conversation. It was many, many years ago. But um, at the end of it, whatever I was saying back to him, he said, you're so guarded. I said, absolutely. The Bible says, uh, guard your heart for everything you do flows through it. It says, try the spirit by the spirit to see if it's of God. So absolutely I'm guarded. Yes. Yes, I am very guarded. Come on. Because I got an assignment. I have a charge to keep and I ain't letting nobody get in my way. Come on. I've come too far. God, I bless your name. Come on. I'm talking about the backlash, even when it comes to relationship. When the enemy realizes that I can't get you out there no more, he gets you in the confines of your own home. The warfare on the mind. And if your mind is consumed, you can't really do the assignment with as much ease and clarity as you should. Yeah. Come on, I'm talking to somebody on today. And see, this is why it, it, this, this awful teaching that's going out telling people they can't get divorced, that's crazy. That's a doctrine of devils. It's a doctrine of devils. The Bible says Moses allowed divorce because of the hardness of hearts. And so it is today. We have people whose heart is hard. Their heart is hard towards God. And you can't do your assignment because their heart is so hard, their heart can't be pricked. And they doing everything under, over, and around the sun. And you can't even think about what you need to think about. You can't even get into the presence of God in your house because there's so much hell going on. Come on. When the shepherd is struck, Sheep scatter. It is the job of the shepherd to guard. Come on, to guard my God. Come on, to guard God. I bless your name, the sheep. Do you know that sheep are blind? So it is the job of the shepherd to have eyes to see and to take that little, the little hook and hook them up by the neck. Come on, let me pull you back in. You done went too far. Hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless and Listen, somebody said your mind is very sharp, honey. That is only <laughs> by the grace of God. I literally give all glory to God. Come on, because the warfare is real. Y'all make sure you're praying for me. The warfare is real. It's real. I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I have lived. John the Baptist was beheaded. Let's go to Acts. Paul was in prison hey, several times. Come on, many times for preaching the gospel. But he said, don't be ashamed of me because I'm in chains. Come on. And so I say that I say that even to those who have been following me for, for some time now. Some of you ain't new. Some of you ain't new. Some of you been following me and you've seen the journey. You've seen how, how my life has unfolded, how I've been through this, that sideways. Come on. You've seen my love life go up, down, sideways, up the hill, down the hill, around the hill, all those things. You've seen it. My God, come on. You've seen it. And I'm, I'm still standing only by the grace of God. That is that's all I got. Come on. But I have a charge to keep. Have a God to glorify. I can't even stay down too long. Talking to my leaders. Come on. A single mother can't stay down too long. Come on. A single father can't stay down. You ain't even got time to get sick. Yeah. Come on. Help us, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. You ain't even got time to get sick. When the shepherd is struck, sheep scatter. Come on. Jesus, when Jesus when, when Jesus got uh when Jesus was taken. Hmm. 
when Jesus was taken and getting ready to be crucified, the the, the disciples was hit. That's why Peter Peter was Peter was like, that's what his that was his heart's posture. My, I mean, I don't know him. Peter did not deny Jesus. Peter did not deny Jesus because he wanted to. He denied Jesus because he was like, that's, that's if they doing that to him, what they gonna do to me? Oh God, if they doing, I don't know him. If they doing that to him, shepherd is struck. The sheep scatter. Help us, Holy Ghost. Pray for your leaders. Pray for your leaders. This is why, this is even why you do have to sow. Let me talk to us. This is why you got to sow. Because you need a leader whose focus is not trying to be divided by trying to make money and try to, because that's a whole, that's a whole thing that you have to be consumed by. You need a leader whose mind is focused. This is why if everybody brings their 10% into the house of God. There'll be me. You can't get this kind of, this is why you have so many preachers giving milk words. Come on. They just giving milk every Sunday give, because they got to go out and work. My God, come on. This is why you got to, you have to bring your 10%, come on, into the church. God, I bless your name. You got to bring your seed, come on, and you got to sow where you're growing. A lot of people, you're growing here, but you're sowing somewhere else. It's not God. That's like eating at Hardee's, come on, but paying Arby's. No, you got, they not, it don't even work like that. Come on, my God, come on. When the shepherd is struck, sheep scatter. Hmm. Let's go to Acts 7 and verse 51. When you are preaching the true unadulterated gospel, yeah, you will have persecution, much persecution, much persecution. Hmm. Come on, help us, Holy Ghost. Acts 7 and 51, you stubborn people. This is what the man of God was preaching. We're talking about Stephen. I love Stephen, child. Stephen blesses me. I love Stephen. He just blesses me. You stubborn people. You are heathens at heart and deaf to the truth. Must you resist, must you forever resist the Holy Spirit? That's what your ancestors did and so do you. Name one prophet your ancestors didn't persecute. You have to understand persecution comes with the office of a prophet. See, this is why I don't care. I don't care. And I don't preach about people calling themselves. I don't care about that. Because a true prophet, you would never sign yourself up to this. <coughs> you wouldn't sign yourself up for this. When you're truly called, it's just the, the Lord called you. Come on. I don't, I can't pick up this phone and call myself on it. Somebody got to call me. Come on. So it does not matter. It does not matter. People's calling themselves. They're going to fold under the persecution. So let's stop wasting our time preaching that message. People calling themselves. So what? So if they call themselves, the persecution is going to, is going to tell the truth about it. That's just the part I need you to get. Who cares? Come on. Name one prophet your ancestors didn't persecute. They even killed the ones who predicted the coming of the righteous one, the Messiah, whom you betrayed and murdered. You deliberately disobeyed God's law, even though you received it from the hands of angels. Stephen was preaching that real gospel. Come on. He was not sugarcoating it. Come on. See, we got too many sugarcoated messages. And so when you heard that strong meat, now you concerned like, who? I mean, that was harsh. Was it harsh or is it true? The word of God is a sword. It is supposed to cut. It is supposed to circumcise the flesh from the spirit. You're supposed to have to get your band-aids after a good sermon. Come on. The Bible says he corrects those he loves. The, Jew, the Jewish leaders were infuriated. <sighs> Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Come on. The Jewish leaders were infuriated by, by Stephen's accusations. <clears throat> they shook their fists at him in rage. God, I love your word on today. They was heated. 
it. They was big mad. I heard people say that before. They was big mad. Come on. Because he was telling the truth. The truth hurts. You can either you can either let the truth cleanse you or you can just let it keep you how you are and just be mad about it. But I'd rather let the truth work. The truth is a disinfectant. It goes in the wound and cleans it out. It burns when you put alcohol on an open wound. It burns when salt goes in a wound. My God, come on, but let it burn. <laughs> let it burn. Let it burn off every impurity. God, I bless your name. I love God and all his children. The Jewish leaders were infuriated by Stephen's accusations and they shook their fist at him. But Stephen, <laughs> glory. I love God and all his children. This is my favorite Bible verse, y'all. I love it. It's one of my favorites. Come on. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit. Let me talk. Let me put a pen right there. Listen, even when we talk about these relationships, you have to see how the man of God or the woman of God handles persecution. Do they do they lash back? Do they still say I'm a, I'm good enough to preach? I'm holy enough to preach, but I still a punch you. I still a cut you. They don't know who they messing with. No, I don't need that kind. I don't need that kind in my life because it's too much persecution that we got to face and we're going to handle this through the Holy Ghost or we ain't going to handle it at all. My God, come on. You have to see how people handle. Is it still a fighter in them? Come on. Or is it a fighter in them? Or is it a fighter in them? Glory. Is it still, are they still handling it in the flesh? Come on. Or are they praying about it? Or are they worshiping their way through? It matters. Hey. How they handle persecution. The Bible says when you get married, Paul said it this way. He said, I wish that y'all all could just be single because then you ain't got to divide your time. My God, come on. But if you are going to marry, know that there will be trouble. You have to see how people handle trouble. So you got to say, God, send a little trouble. In, in your courting season, send a little trouble because I got to see how they handle trouble. I got to see how they handle when money is short and money is messed up. I got to see how they handle when somebody talk about them. I got to see how they handle if I spill something on their favorite thing. My God, come on. Do they go from zero to a hundred real quick? Do they have road rage in them? God, I bless your name. Come on. My God, come on. How do they handle when I tell them, no, my body is the temple of God. You don't get to sample it. I'm not hot and ready like a little Caesar's pizza. Do they have their own thou shall not list? My God, come on. I'm trying to talk to somebody on today. All these things are very important. <laughs> but step full of the Holy Spirit gazed steadily <laughs> into heaven. God, I bless your name. And saw the glory of God. He saw Jesus standing at the right hand. Hey! My God, standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. Listen, that blessed me. I don't know about nobody else, but that blessed me. He's going through hell and he's still single. Come on. He was able to keep his gaze steady. He was able to look up into the hills. You have to be mindful how your leaders deal with persecution. I'm not saying they won't have moments. Come on, because we're human, we have hearts, our hearts bleed. But I need to see after that, can they still see God in that thing? Can they still pray for their enemies? Are they still preaching every message on their haters? I don't preach messages on my haters. I don't know who you are if you're my hater. My God, come on, because our only true enemy is the devil. I don't care. I don't like listening to me just talk, messages talking about your haters. I don't care about that. Come on. Listen, Jesus, Jesus had people that came against him. It's normal. It's natural. You have to have uh, enemies. That's normal. But you don't have to glorify it. <laughs> you got to have enemies. The Bible said he is creating a table. Presenting a table in the presence of your enemies. You got it. You can't have the table properly prepared without the enemy. So we got that. Cool. Let's move on. That's a milk message. Come on. We got to go on up to strong meat. Yes, I have enemies and that's okay with me. Come on. 
but stepping full of the Holy Ghost gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God. He saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. I don't know if that blesses y'all like it blesses me because the Bible says it this way. The Bible says Jesus, after he completed his assignment, he was seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you realize that the faith that Stephen had in this moment, it made Jesus stand up. <laughs> Glory. I'm trying to have that kind of faith that makes Jesus stand up. My God, come on. The Bible said he saw Jesus stand. That's holy. That is holy, y'all. I don't know about y'all, but that is so holy. Woo, glory. He saw Jesus standing at the place of honor at God's right hand. And he told them, look, they cussing at him. They acting up. Come on, they doing the most. We're in Acts 7. So we started at verse 51. We are at verse 56. And he told them, look, I see heavens opening. The son of man standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. He still was preaching the gospel. He still was talking about Jesus in the middle of being persecuted, in the middle of rage, in the middle of these people. God, I bless your name, cutting up and acting real good and crazy. But can you see God? I know that you see me and you don't really like what the message is, but I'm talking about the great messenger on today. I just got my message from the messenger and I'm just talking, but I just, I see God. Hey, glory. You have to learn as a leader to see God in every situation. It is what it is. It is what it is. Come on. You don't get to choose. This is what the Lord told me. So I'm just going to give it to you. My God, you don't get to choose your persecution. You don't get to choose your congregation. You don't get to choose your pulpit. Hey, glory. You don't get to choose. Well, you know, I'm, you know, listen, I mean, the Lord help me. You don't get to choose your persecution. Shh. As long as you keep following me, keep following me, stay humble. But to be humbled sometimes is humiliating. It's the root word. You may feel humiliated. I can't worry how it looks to you. I got to keep following God. You don't get to choose your pulpit. You don't get to choose your pews. Yeah. You don't get to choose who I call to you. My God, come on. You don't get to choose. Your pulpit means you don't get to choose the, the time that you preach the message, the place you preach the message. You don't get to choose your congregation. You don't get to choose your pews. That means you don't get to choose the audience. You might think that, oh, I'm called to the nations, but your first ministry is right here uh, in the Sunday school class. Your first ministry is right here at your at your job, right here at the Walmart cash register, right here at the, uh, 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 at the Dillard shoe department. Come on. That might be your congregation. Yeah, the co-workers that you work with. Come on. Might be your husband, might be your wife. Come on. Listen, you don't get to choose the persecution. The things that come against you. Well, you know, Lord, I, I don't really want to deal with sickness. I don't want to deal with sickness, but you know, I could deal with this. The Lord knows. God, I bless your name. They put their they put their hands over their ears and began shouting. They rushed at him and dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. His accusers took off their coat and laid them at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He fell to his knees shouting, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. And with that, he died. <sighs> Listen, I don't know about y'all. That bless me. That's just so good. Come on. In the middle of persecution. Come on. In the middle of persecution, he was able to pray for. He said, don't forgive them. He said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Where did he learn that from? Jesus. Come on. He didn't even say, honey, y'all going to get what y'all deserve. No, none of that. Come on. Listen. He had compassion because he already knew. 
He already knew. The Bible says, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. He already knew that they were going to have to deal with the Lord. Come on, I've, had, I've been in this situation many times. My God, come on. I had a man one time, I worked at a boutique down in Florida. He stole half of my things. He, he told me, come bring your stuff. Bring your stuff. You can bring your stuff here and just sell it and just run my boutique. And so I did that. And um, he ended up stealing half of my stuff. He ended up putting me out while I was gone out of town. My God, because I was in there preaching the gospel. Come on, y'all know what we was having Bible stuff. Up. Listen, if you invite me, you invite all of the glory. So you don't get to, I don't get to be separated. <laughs> so anyway, he puts me out. And the next thing I know, um, he gets me, he sends me my stuff. And when I get my stuff, half of it's missing. So I call him, I reach out to him. I say, Hey, I say, um, half of my stuff is missing. Now you've taken all of my really good quality pieces. Where, where are my things? I don't know what you're talking about. So I send them pictures. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. I said, my, 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 those are my exact words. He said, what you going to say, woman of God? Funny part is, literally, in my mind, I said, what I was saying was, Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on him. Because at this time, I was still homeless. That was my bread and butter, how I fed my daughter. That was how I put food on the table. That was how I put gas in the car. So you you still in... From somebody that's, that's, that ain't, okay, bless God. I said, Lord, have mercy. I told him, I said, what I was saying is, Lord, have mercy on him when you deal with him, come on, about how he has treated me. Yeah, because the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. He said, oh, okay. I said, all right, well, you have a good day. We hung up the phone. <clears throat> when I separate ways, he never took me off of the, um, he never took me off of his, uh, phone number Q for his alarm system. That man ended up having a fire and two break-ins within a year. Come on. See, you don't get to, you don't, you don't got to avenge your own, own name. I can still see God. I thank God because it was right in the middle of a hot mess. And I, every time I went in that salon, we had, it was a salon in a boutique. We was preaching, praying, prophesying. People was getting healed. People was getting delivered. I was preaching the word right there on the corner. Come on. I was breaking up the fallow ground. I decreed and declared that his life would never be the same. Come on. See, you, when you learn how to see God, every situation. Come on. And I ain't lacked. Come on. I have not lacked. God has been good to me. But it is the job of the enemy. Come on. To 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 get the 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 shepherd off track. Let's go to Matthew 4. It's the job of the enemy, come on, to persuade your leader. God, I bless your name. Matthew 4 and verse 1. Then Jesus led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. The spirit of God led him. Come on, to be tempted. Come on. Did anyone get that? Did anyone get that? The spirit of God led him. My God, come on. To be tempted in the wilderness by the devil. This is how you get your qualifications. This is why many people can preach the word, but they keep calling. They keep falling prey to sin. They keep falling into affairs. They keep hearing stories about them doing drugs on the side. Come on, because they have not learned what to do with temptation. The Bible says resist temptation and it will flee for 40 days and 40 nights. He fasted and became very hungry. During that time, the devil came to him and said, if you are the son of God, the first thing that the enemy does, God, I bless your name, come on, is attack your, who you are in God. That's why as a woman preacher, they keep saying that you can't preach. My God, come on. That's why as a woman apostle, they keep telling me I can't be an apostle because uh, there ain't no women apostles. My God, that's why the warfare that you have in your mind that you're going through, you're beautiful, but the devil keeps telling you that you're ugly. That's why the warfare in your mind, you know, I, I sat down with a young man and he told me, he said, I don't want to get married because I just don't think I'll treat her right. My God, come on. You're going to treat her right because you're aware that you can treat her wrong. My God, come on. So See, it's the job of the enemy, come on, to use mental uh, mental stress on you, come on, to get in your head, to tell you you are not who God has told you that you were, my God, come on, to tell you that you are not enough, you'll never be enough, you're not good enough, you don't know what you're saying, you can't preach, pray, and prophesy, you don't know the whole Bible, it's not your time to start the assignment, and we use this excuse right here. I'm just praying about it, sis. I'm waiting on God. I wish we prayed about that sin that we used to do. And some of us still do. 
But when it comes to the things of God, we want to, you know, I just got to pray about that. I'm not saying that you don't pray about it, but many of you are using it as an excuse. First thing the devil told him, if you are the son of God, the devil knew who he was, but he challenged, do you know who you are? How many times do you got to be told that you're a prophet? How many times do you got to be told that you are an evangelist? My God, come on, stop sitting under ministries if you're not going to receive the full word. Stop taking the parts that are comfortable. <laughs> We're in Matthew 4 and 1. My God, come on. It is the job of the enemy to challenge your identity. That's why we have so many people that are struggling with identity confusion. Born a boy, they feel like they're a girl. The devil told them that. My God, come on. And they don't know how to stand. And this is what God said that I am. How do I know that I'm a girl? I can check my hardware. I have a cycle once a month. My God, come on. You don't have to be. Your identity is the first thing that is challenged. <laughs> Well, I know, you know, I know I'm called, you know, a prophet, but, you know, I don't really want, I don't need no title. You do need a title. You don't never have a police coming to your house without a uniform, without a badge, without having to go through. You have went through the hell, but you don't want to graduate and have the title. Come on. But you want the title in your workplace. So when did the workplace title become more important than the title that God gave you? At work, if you're the CEO, if you're the manager, if you're the supervisor, you want the title. My God, come on. But in the kingdom, I don't need no title, sis. Just call me a child of God. The Lord told me this way. Your title is your access pass. And if you're not going by your title, but you're doing the work, you're operating illegally. It's like fornication. It's like having sex and not being married. It's like common law marriage. It's the same. You're going through with the actions, but you're not going. You don't want to be called who God called you. Yeah. Help us, Holy Ghost. Come on. And see, many of you, you're saying, well, if God don't tell me himself, I'm not going to listen. Do you realize he speaks through his messengers? The Lord called me an apostle through two separate prophets on two separate occasions who did not know each other. It was about six months apart. My God, come on. That first time I rejected it because I had been taught that there was no such thing as female apostles. But when it came back the second time from an apostle, from a man of God that I did not even know, I, he didn't know nothing. He prophesied my whole life to me. My God, come on. I felt the presence of God. God, I bless your name. Come on. My God, I'm trying to help us on today. I I had to say, God, I accept. I accept who you have called me to be and I will walk in it if you will lead me. It's really that simple. We're making it too hard. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on. I want us to get this on today. The first thing that a leader is challenged with is their identity. You ain't even a real man of God. You ain't even a real woman of God. Come on. During that time, the devil came and said to him, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. But Jesus told them, no, the scripture says, this is why as the people of God, you got to study to show yourself approved as a leader. You got to study to show yourself. You got to know what the Bible says for yourself because the devil knows one scripture, but you got to know more than one on that same subject. But people that only know one scripture on the subject, they're easily easily persuaded because they only know one scripture on the subject. We got a whole 66 books, y'all. <laughs> you have to eat the whole scroll because some things God said to a certain group of people, to a time, to a situation, you got to eat the whole scroll. <laughs> yeah, that's it. He took the word to try to tempt the, tempt the devil. You're so true. That's it. It is written. That part blesses me. Come on. My God, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Yeah. Exactly. That's good. Know which word to apply when. So true. 
Then the devil took him to the holy city of Jerusalem to the highest point. See, many people, okay, come on, I'm talking so that you'll understand what is going on. The first attack on the end on the leader is to challenge your identity. Once you're solid in your identity, this is the next attack of the enemy. Come on. Then the devil took him to the holy city of Jerusalem to the highest point of the temple said, if you are the son of God, jump off. This is a constant thing though. Come on. Because at each new level, your identity will be challenged again. God, I bless your name. Come on. If you are the son of God, jump off. For the scripture says he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you and, and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. My God. Then Jesus responded. The scripture also says, come on, you got to know what the scripture also says. The scripture also says you must not test the Lord your God. That's it. The second test that the leader has to go through is th they have to understand when I am being uh, provoked to test God, to go past grace. When I'm being provoked, come on, to come out of the boundaries that God has set for me. My God, come on. When I'm being provoked, God, I bless your name. Come on, to go against God. Come on. Oh, no, I can't test God on that. You can have a drink. I mean, come on, Jesus turn water to wine. Come on. You can, you ain't got to, you ain't got to do all of that. You can still blah, blah, blah. Come on. When you have to know when you're being tested to go outside of the boundaries that God has set for you. <laughs> God, I bless your name. Come on, verse eight. This is the third one. The next. The next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain. And this is where many fold. Right here. Takia, you missed class on Monday, woman of God. Uh, I've been meaning to reach out to you, but it's been an adventurous week. But the Lord has been faithful. So reach out to me after the broadcast. We also have to do our intake interview. Um, I'm so, I need us to get this so that we'll understand this clearly. This is the third test. Many pass the identity test and then they pass the, the, they understand their boundaries. Okay. They understand their boundaries. They know that, but this is where many have folded. Keep me God. That's what I say all the time. Just keep me. Come on. My God. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you kneel down. Worship me. Yeah. That's where the prosperity preacher comes from. Because they're offered the money, the fame, the glitter, the clothes, the labels, the cars, the houses. This is where many of our gospel Hollywood preachers have folded. My God, come on. They have now, they don't preach the true unadulterated gospel. They preach a motivational message. They have big, huge churches of stadium sized churches of people that they are just motivating, 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 motivating right to hell. My God, come on. The sword don't never come out in their church. My God, come on. There's no correction. They don't deal with so, uh, sexual immorality. They don't talk about homosexuality. They don't talk about masturbation. They don't talk about fornication. They don't talk about drinking. They don't talk about dress code. Anything goes. Many people, my God, come on. Many leaders fold when money hey. is being offered. Hey. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scripture says, you must worship the Lord, your God, and serve him only. Many have, don't even know it. My God, come on. Many have, they don't even realize they are now worshiping money. My God, the Bible says you can't have two masters. I keep seeing all these preachers and they just, they done turn into fashion icons. I'm not talking about, I feel free to wear whatever you think is good and bless the Lord, however. But but many have turned into, on the stage, their fashion icons. They trying to make, they got personal stylists. How you need a personal stylist to preach the gospel? That's crazy. Come on. You need a personal stylist to preach the gospel? You just need a regular clothes. You just need something to put on. You just need to not be naked. Come on. 
Exactly. Come on. It is crazy. Come on. I'm talking to somebody. We've made a performance out of the gospel. You got a whole, and now I'm not saying you don't need your hair comb. You do need to look presentable. You need to be presentable because that's a distraction. But at the very end of the day, some of this has gone very far. My God, come on. You can't even wipe the sweat off of you because you got 17 layers of makeup on and it's going to all come off on the rag. Come on. We, we, we've created a platform of entertainment. The preacher is so far up. They can't even lay hands. Can't even touch. The Bible says lay hands on the sick. You can't even touch. You can't even touch nobody. Come on. Many of them are cowards. And, and, the, and they're, they're, they're cowards and they don't even want to talk about that. They got the pulpit so high up. So, honey, it's 16 stories high. My God, you can't even touch. Jesus touched the people. <sighs> Help us, Holy Ghost. Then the devil went away and the angels came and took care of him, took care of Jesus. As a leader, you have to be able to uh, go through the persecution, the testing, the trying of your faith. The Bible says after you've suffered a little while, the God of all grace is faithful to restore and place you on a firm foundation. You got to learn though. You have to learn to endure. Yeah. You have to learn to endure the season, okay, of hardness. All right. Hmm. Leaders have to be able to deal with the persecution, the backlash, the lies, the truth. Come on. Because as you are leading a people, Come on, Moses, the people began so, acted so ignorant. They acted so ignorant that he could not think clearly. They complained so much. They didn't realize, come on, I'm talking. Now let me talk to the, those who are following their leaders. The people complained and acted so ignorant so much that he got mixed up in his mind. And he was told, the Lord told him to, 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 to speak to the rock and he struck the rock. The water still ran. The water still ran, but it made him miss his blessing. If you're going to follow, follow. They did not realize that we have been delivered from Egypt. We've been delivered from slavery. Come on. They still wanted everything behind them. When you are following, let me talk to somebody on today. When you're following a new ministry and a new leader and you're in a new season, don't keep telling that leader what the old person did. Because if that was what God wanted for you in this season, you would still be there. Come on. You can't have too many conflicting voices. This is why you can't be having so many. Uh, exactly. The pressure made him act out of character. So true. This is why you can't have be under 17 different ministries. My God, the people that were in the wilderness with Moses, they followed Moses' instructions. And and when Moses raised up, Come on, his own, uh, what's the word, what's the word, uh, predecessor, the one that was going to go after him, Joshua, was being raised up because he listened to Moses. You can't be under 16 ministries, people of God. You can't eat off of all of these different tables. You have to grow roots where you are planted. Come on, my God, come on. Where, when the last time you seen a tree in your front yard get up and move across the street and then go over to your mama's house and then go over to your daddy's house? You're getting information from too many people. That's why you're conflicted. We got people out here that go to church and they listen to the word of God and they listen to that, but then they also getting tarot card readings and then they also listen to their grandma who was in witchcraft when she was younger and the residue was still on her and so she's telling them, all kind of old wise tales that are against God. Come on, you got to be mindful. I need to make sure I'm following, come on, a set voice for instruction. Now, if I'm lying, please call me on it. Come on, because I, I'm not above reproach. Come on, I'm not above, above. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Come on, listen, that's it. That's good. Too many visions makes division or confusion. You're telling the truth. So true, come on. 
We got too many people in our head. Come on. You got to be willing to leave the past. Come on and move to the next. Take what you need. Come on. Because sometimes you, many people, I found this. Many people, when the Lord brings people to this ministry, they love God, but they have a spirit of religion. And it's my job to, to, to prune that thing. That's a lot of people. Some are right off the streets and they need deliverance and so on and so forth. But a lot of, they, a lot of people come with the spirit of religion. They come with God in a box. And when you step into the prophetic, you have to be willing to take God out of the box and let God stretch out, let God have his way. But because they've been so accustomed to the box, because they've been so accustomed to keeping God in a tight space, come on, uh, uh, it's, it's uncomfortable and it does not make sense to them. Hey. But a leader has to know their assignment. And they also have to have a revolving door. I used to say when I was in the streets, I don't keep nothing that don't want to be kept. So I know I ain't about to get over here and, 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 and hoard the people of God. We got some people, we got some leaders that are hoarding people. They, they, they're, they're overly chastising you when you leave. If you leave and I feel like that, it, that I believe that God is telling me it's not your season to be up. Okay. That's good. Uh, if, 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 and I believe, I'm going to tell you this. If, if I really believe and I feel God telling me to tell you, I'm going to say, listen, I don't believe your season is up, but I trust that you will find your way and this too will be a part of your testimony. That's all I got. I don't have time to be cursing people and telling them all these kind of crazy things. Come on. Listen, we have to let God lead us through the leaders he has put us under. Everybody has to have a season of submission. Come on. Everybody has to have a season of submission. Let's go to 1 Timothy. We almost done, y'all. Hallelujah. God, I bless your name. Oh, God, you're good. First, uh... First Timothy and First um, Timothy two and one. First Timothy two and one. I urge you first of all to pray for all people. Okay. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity, okay? Let's make sure that we are praying for those that are in authority, those that are our leaders, those that are in our leaders in government, those that are our leaders in the church house, those that are our leaders in our homes, those that are our leaders in our family. Come on. It is important for us to pray for our leaders and those that are in authority. We got to continue, y'all, because it's the job of the enemy to take them out to get to you. <laughs> My God. You don't have to understand everything. You're, when you are called to follow a ministry, just do your part. Do what you're asked to do. It doesn't have to make sense. It does not have to make sense. Come on. It does not have to, because you're not going to understand everything. Always think about it in the, in the relationship of parent-child. When you tell your kids, you got, you need to go to bed. You need to go to bed. You, Mama's being mean. Daddy's being mean. They just don't want us to have no fun. No, it's not that they don't want you to have no fun. The next morning when that alarm clock get up, it's time to get up for school. I'm sleepy. I was trying to keep you from it. I was trying to preserve you from it. Come on. But you still got to get up anyway. You still got to go to school anyway. Come on. No one, when you truly believe God has sent you to a place and you believe the hand of God is upon that leader, don't do all the kickback, y'all. If you don't believe that that's where you're supposed to be, then leave. Don't sit under a leader you do not trust. Women, don't marry a man you do not trust. Come on. Men, don't marry a woman you do not trust. Unfortunately, parents don't get, I mean, kids don't get to pick their parents. And that's the same way. Do you actually realize that you don't get to pick your church? 
Because the same way as children don't get to pick their leaders, the Lord has a place where he wants you to grow. Um, the children of Israel didn't get to pick Moses. The Lord picked Moses and Aaron to lead them out. Yeah. My God. Wow. Amen. Somebody said that leader talks about this just yesterday in Bible study. Come on. It, we're telling the truth. And I'll tell you what blessed me so good. A woman of God called me and she uh, she had prophesied to me. And she said the Lord had told her that it's many people under the ministry that I'm having to tell things two and three times. And the Lord said, I don't have time to be telling people stuff two and three times. Either you're going to do it or not. Come on. Because you're holding up the flow. And then I was listening to a message yesterday while Anita Bynum was preaching, and she said the same thing, that in this season, it is time for the leaders have to be about following God. They don't have time to keep talking, to, to telling you the same thing. Oh, they don't have time to be babysitting you. They don't have time to keep, did you do that? Did you do that? That's why I, listen, when I say it out of my mouth, if I say it, I always have a paper and pencil. Because when I say, especially I'm talking to my leaders on the leadership team, when you call me, have a paper and pencil, I don't know. A lot of times the Lord speaks through me and you'll say, what did you say, woman of God, child? I don't know. Come on. It was the Holy Ghost. I don't know. I don't keep a track. I don't keep a track of your word. I keep a track of the word he tells me. When the Lord speaks through me, I don't keep a Rolodex. Some, very few, some words will stick in my spirit. But for the most part, I just let God flow through me. So I don't, don't call me back six weeks later and say, Man, woman of God, what is that you have said? I don't know. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Help us, Holy Ghost. I need us to understand this so we can get what it is that the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Now, two more scriptures. Exodus 17, Moses, le leaders have to have a good support system. Let me say that, okay? Le leaders, amen, leaders have to have a good support system, okay? It's very important. Let's go to Exodus 17 and let's start at verse um. 10. They have to have a good support system and people that know how to follow directions and not be offended. Come on. I remember my last church, I was under the man of God when he would, he would flow, he flowed very heavily in, um, in healing. And so it would be so many people coming up and he would tell them, get back. Come on. He would be talking to his team. Get back. Come on. Get a blanket. Pull it over. Don't do that. Come on. Do this. And people would say, he's mean. No, I'm flowing under the anointing. I see things in the spirit realm that you don't see. So you can't follow a leader if you're easily offended. My God, come on. If I'm telling you to do something and you say, hey, I don't. And I say, hey, I need you to do it like this. Well, I think this is the way I need you to do it how I asked you to do it. Come on. It's because there is a purpose. And you don't got to know everything, my God. Come on, Exodus 17 and 10. So Joshua did what Moses had commanded and fought the army of the Am Amalek. Meanwhile, Moses and Aaron and her climbed to the top of a nearby hill. As long as Moses held up the staff in his hand, the Israelites had the advantage. But whenever he dropped his hands, the Amalekites gained the advantage. Moses' arm soon became so tired that he could no longer hold him up. My God, come on. Let me speak back to that. Let me speak back one more time. Hmm. Let me speak back to that one more time about sewing. Let me go back. Because if Moses had to put his arms down to go work a job, hmm. If Moses had to put his arms down to go work a job, come on. If Paul had to go work a job, come on. He couldn't have traveled where the Lord sent him because he had to be at, at clock in on Monday at 9 a.m. Come on. See, I need us to get this. We're, we're looking so small mindedly at things. That we're not understanding these, your leader, your spiritual leader has the words of life in their belly for you. They have the word of instruction in their belly for you. God, I bless your name. Come on. So Moses' arms soon became so tired that he could no longer hold them up. There comes seasons where as a leader, you get burden down. It's not easy to keep being consistent. My God, come on. Even when you got the Holy Ghost, Jesus had to have help carrying his cross. It was heavy. It's heavy. Pray for your leaders. Come on. Pray for your leaders. This is why to be an armor bearer, it is an honored position. It is an honored position because you are help carrying the burden 
of the people along with the man of God. It is a it is an honor to be a uh to be a leader in the church. The Lord told Moses, I need you to get 70 men, and I'm gonna take some of the spirit that I put on you, and I'm gonna put it on them, and they are gonna help you carry the vision because you can't do everything. Your leader can't do everything. <laughs> So Moses' arm soon became so tired that he could no longer hold them up. So Aaron and her found a stone for him to sit on. You have to learn how to be so in tune with your leader. Because he didn't have time to tell them that his arms were tired. He, They were able to look at him and see, uh-uh, pastor's getting tired. Come on. Listen, I miss I miss my, my one of my first spiritual daughters. She just blessed me because she, she had eyes on me. Come on, she kept eyes on me. She kept eyes on me in the natural. She kept eyes on me in the spirit. But you know who the, who's the eyes now? My little heaven, that's my little eagle eye. She looks. When I go preach, pray, and prophesy, she be like, mama, that one was acting up. And it's not gossip. She, she said, in the spirit, I seen that one was mad. That one was jealous. That one was this. My God, come on. That one ain't right for you, mama. That one ain't a good friend. That one is fake. My God, that's her favorite word. Bless God. Come on. Listen, we have to understand that you have to learn how to be so in tune. Let me talk to the married people. God, I love your word on today. My God, you have to learn how to be so in tune with your husband or your wife that you you can see when they tired. You can see when they had a long day. Come on. Let me talk to my men of God whose wife just had a baby. Y'all just had a baby together. You got to see when she's tired. My God. Come on. And say, baby, I know I got to go to work in the morning, but I'm going to stay up and get the baby tonight. Come on. I'm going to take the pressure off of you today. Come on. You have to learn how to be so in tune. <laughs> baby, I'm going to cook today. Come on. You got to learn how to be so in tune. With your husband to see when he's tired and you have to learn how to be like, baby, come on, I ran your, your bath water is ready when you get home. I already took the trash out. Come on, is it anything you need for me? Come on, you have to learn how to have eyes on the people that take care of you. <laughs> God, I bless your name. That's it. Loving and serving your spouse is worship. You're telling the truth. Come on, let me talk to my, my youth for a minute. You have to learn how to have eyes on your parent. You have to learn how to see when they're tired and say, I just went here. I'm going to just go ahead and clean the house before they get there because I don't want them to have to come home and argue about that. Come on, I just went ahead and did this. I, I did what I needed to do at school so that I could, so mama wouldn't have to argue with my teacher today. Come on, you have to see when people are tired. People are out here committing suicide over the pressure. Closing church doors over the pressure. <laughs> Giving up on their God assignments. Walking away from their families. <laughs> Come on. And you don't know what it's like until you're in that seat. May the burden of your leader be upon you. May you have eyes to see your leader. My God, my daughter, one time we was at a church and they were collecting, it was pastor's anniversary and they was collecting, uh, I don't know how much money it was, but it was, it was a couple of hundred dollars for their pastor from each person to send them on a very nice vacation. And my daughter was like, mama, why are they collecting so much money from the, why they want money, so much money to send them on a vacation until her mom was a pastor. Now she see. She sees how busy I am, how I'm running back and forth, how a lot of times she'll come in my room and she want to talk to me and I'm on the phone with somebody for hours praying, preaching, prophesying, speaking into their life, bringing them back, come on, resuscitating them in the spirit, how much time I got to spend in my word, how much time I spend in the presence of God, how much time I spend in worship, how much time I spend in fellowship. Now she understands because she sees it from a different perspective and that's so true. Hmm. So true. God, I bless your name. So Aaron and her found a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each side of Moses holding up his hands. So his hands at so, so his hands held steadily until sunset. As the result, Joshua overwhelmed the army of the Amalek in battle. When, God, I bless your name. Come on. When the leader is in position and the people are supporting the leader and everybody is in their place, my God, there's results on the ministry. There are results on the ministry. Yay! 
you. My God, come on. God, I bless your name. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Someone said, can you pray for my belly so that God can do a miracle and have a baby? Are you married? Ask me, answer that question for me. Are you married? God, I bless your name. I love the Lord. He's a good God. He's a good God. Come on. Our last scripture is Mark 15. Come on. Listen, when your leader gives an assignment today, I promise you it's because they see into the future. You don't have to understand it. <laughs> My God. Come on. When you when when your leader gives an assignment, my God, you don't have to understand it. I need us to get that. You don't have to understand because they're, they see in the future. When I speak to you, I, God has given me eyes to see in the, in, the, in the business realm. So when I look at you and I tell you what business is on your life and I tell you to start that today, don't hesitate. Do not hesitate. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. Listen, there is a blessing in obedience. <laughs> Mark 15, Mark 15 and verse, thank you, Lord. Oh God, I love your word. Verse 21. Now we're talking about Jesus on the way to be crucified. The bypasser, the passer by, bless God, that's dyslexia at its best. And the the passerby named Simon, who was who was from Cyrene, was coming in the coming in from the countryside. Just then, the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus cross. Simon was the father of, of Alexander and Rufus. Even Jesus needed help carrying the cross. Come on, it was three hundred pounds. God, I bless your name. Come on. When you are truly doing your God assignment. Thank you, Lord. When you are truly doing your God assignment, you cannot do it alone. This is why people are having burnout. Because they don't have a support system. The Lord called the apostle to lead. He called the prophet to support. He called the pastor to come under. He called the evangelist to come under. He called the teacher. Come on, there is a way that God has built his church. The Bible said I gave gifts to the church. And when the church is operating under the fivefold apostolic mantle and everyone is in position, now we see fruit on the tree. God, I bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, oh God. Lord, we thank you for your word on today, for your good. You're holy, you're righteous. We ask that you let this word penetrate into our hearts today. Let it walk with us. May we meditate on it. May it circumcise the flesh from the spirit. May it circumcise even some of our carnal thinking. We've been thinking carnally when it comes to leadership. We have been thinking about our leaders as if they're trying to run our life. We've been thinking about as they're just trying to boss us around. My God, come on. May we understand that the leaders are speaking your word. They're speaking from the throne room of heaven. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for our leaders. Thank you for our parents. Thank you for our, pa our, our, our spouses. Lord, we just thank you for life today. The opportunity to live it again. The opportunity to lead well and be led well. Lord, I bless your name. We ask that you touch every person on the broadcast today. Touch their hearts and their minds. Their spirit, their relationship, their finances. Give them understanding, clarity, peace, deliverance, hope, faith, perseverance. Give them the things that they are in search of, God, not by power and not by might, but by your spirit. May the testimony be God did it. 
May the testimony be God did it. May the testimony be I'm a product of the glory of God. I'm, I'm right here in my right mind, not because I'm so good, not because I'm so smart, but only by the grace of God, the wisdom of God, the favor of God, because the hand of God has been upon my life. If not, I would have lost my mind a long time ago. We pray for the leaders on today, God. Send them an Aaron and a her. People that have eyes on them. They will see what they need. Send people to sow into the ministry. Send people to support financially. Send people to come alongside and say, I don't have a financial seed, but what do you need done that I can put my hand to the plow to do? Send people laborers, God. Your word says the laborers are, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Send laborers, oh God, to the ministries. People that are ready to do the work, people that don't have a contrary spirit, people that are ready to submit to the vision that you have given the leader. Bless your name, O God. For Lord, you're holy. You're righteous. Strengthen us, O God. Strengthen our hands so that we do not turn our hand back, O God. Your word says that any man that puts their hand to the plow and turns back, they're not fit. They're not in shape for the kingdom of God. May we preach boldly. May we cry loud and spare not. May we not be afraid of men and their faces, their words. Oh God, but may we have the spirit of Stephen. May we be able to see God even in persecution. Even when we are being stoned. <laughs> may we love not our life unto death. May we not hold back because we want, don't want to die. May we not hold back the truth from people because we don't want the relationship to die. May we not hold back the truth because we want to spare our job. We want to hear you say, well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. May we serve well. Hallelujah. Bless your name. May we have a servant's heart. For the son of man did not come to be served. He came to serve. May we serve. May we serve. Correct our posture on today. If you find anything that is not like you, God, allow us to make a correction for your holy. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. Bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who, when the shepherd is struck. Yeah. That was our message today. If you missed the broadcast, you can catch it on our YouTube channel. It'll be called When the Shepherd is Struck. Today, we talked about the backlash, the adversity, the behind the scenes. The job of the enemy is to make the shepherd stop. Come on. Make sure that you are doing your part, supporting your leaders properly. All right. Hallelujah. Bless God. We are located in Savannah, Georgia, but we actually travel. We do travel. Uh, if you'd like to sow into the word on today, our cash app is dollar sign makeover ministry. Um, you also can find it. It's in my bio. Hallelujah. Whitney, while you on here, I've been meaning to call you. Listen, I really believe that you're supposed to be in this leadership class, woman of God. So please, let's connect today. You're supposed to be in this class. Um, hallelujah. I'm so excited about what God is getting ready to do, y'all. I don't want to miss it. 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 Hallelujah. All right, people of God, that's our word on today. I pray it encouraged you and strengthened you. Remember, if this is where you have come, you've decided, I want to come to the Makeover Ministry Tuesday through Friday every morning. I want to get the word. Uh, I want you to make sure that you um, are sowing. We only ask for $25 a week. That's lunch money. $25 a week. If everybody does their part, we are able to go forth. We're able to travel. We're able to do whatever it is that God is doing in this season, people of God. So let's make sure that we are diligent uh, and we're faithful over the few things so that the Lord can make us ruler over much. It is honestly a poverty mindset and it's a it's a it's a poverty mindset and it's very um, carnal to think that giving to God is going to make you be in lack. That's crazy. It's actually an antichrist. I can't sow because I'm not going to have what I need. 
The Bible says, if you give, he'll give it back to you. Press down, shaking together and running over. May man give unto your bosom. All right. All right, people of God, I love you all. I pray the word, encourage you, and it bless you. You can find us on our, um, amen. Um, our, you can find us on our, uh, we're on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram at Makeover Ministry. We also have a, um, we also have our website, uh, which is makeoverministry.com. I'm so excited. Have y'all heard the news, y'all? We are preparing to have our own television station. I'm so excited. It's going to be called MT MTC TV. And so if you have something that you are looking for or to share with the world, it doesn't have to be preach, praying, and prophesying, but it does have to be clean. Okay. Um, if you have a cooking show, an art show, if you have a gift, my God, just let's connect. Let's just, just, just bring me the idea. Let's talk about it. I'm so excited. God has given me this opportunity and I want to give it to you. And so we're going to be able to give you a, um, you can have your show on, or you can have your broadcast on for as little as $100 a month. $100 a month. That's four times a, a month or five. If it's a, a five, one, five, if it is five weeks in the month uh, for only a hundred dollars. And the beautiful part about it is whatever, whatever you come in the door paying, you get to keep that as long as you pay consistently. So whenever the prices go up, you say, Hey, somebody be like, girl, the, yo, you only paying a hundred dollars a month for your 30 minute show. Yeah, child. Cause I came in, in the beginning, you want to get in where you fit in. We also we have opportunity for a commercial. We want to actually make sure that we are, um, we want to make sure that we are, um, uh, highlighting faith-based businesses. Y'all know I'm really big on that. Whitney, put the name of your business up. So somebody asked me about my beautiful sign, the makeover ministry. I'm so excited, y'all. I'll put, put an actual picture on my uh, on all of my social media so you can see it. And I'll tag her business. She does beautiful signs. It's almost time for a new one. Um, but I want to make sure that we give that opportunity. Uh, if you have children that are really funny, come on, they might want to put together a little comedy skit or whatever. If you, if whatever it is that you is in your hard to do to advance the kingdom of God. We don't have enough clean TV. Maybe you put together plays. Maybe you put together sitcoms. Um, so no, you the third you can do a 30 minute segment uh and there's that's the, the beginning. That's the there you can do 30 minutes up to two hours and it just goes up from there. Um, if you have a ministry that you want to broadcast whatever donations you take in you keep all your own we don't we don't want any of it. Um, so it's just a platform that the Lord has given me to give you. We were we'll beginning with internet television and then we will advance to our own roku channel fire stick uh all of that stuff whatever it's called so reach out reach out if you teach music whatever it is that you teach let's put it on a platform to get it out to the world where it is supposed to be all right come in while we are building i'm so excited about what god is doing y'all all right i love you all be encouraged okay you can find the woman of god that made this wonderful sign makeover ministry um at whitney designs by whitney b on instagram and tiktok designs by whitney b please make sure Please make sure that y'all check out her signs are so beautiful. I just love them. My God. And that's my, listen, that was one of my first cupcakes. Let me just tell y'all just two seconds. It was one of my first cupcakes. So she done seen my whole life. We, I've been doing her hair since she was probably eight years old, I believe. So she's seen, she's seen my life before I got married. She's seen the whole transition. She's seen the gay life. She's seen the deliverance. <laughs> she has been there through the whole thing. And so I thank God for her um, and everything. <laughs> I thank God for her life. And I just thank God for everything that God is doing in, in your life. So join us back here tomorrow at 8 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. We will be transitioning on, let me see if I got my calendar, on um, August the 23rd, we will be going back to 7 a.m. So make sure you mark your calendar on that. All right, people of God, I love you. Be encouraged. Remember to share the broadcast. If you can't so you can share. If you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. All of those things, get it going in the algorithms and all of those things. All right, have a good day on purpose. Blessings and peace. See you all tomorrow, Lord willing.